On Friday night, we had the grade seven farewell mass. And I'm sure by now you know that the average out of 30 students that stay in the Catholic faith after grade seven is about three out of 30. And so as a priest, you feel a lot of pressure at this farewell mass that you gotta give some inspirational message to the students to keep them in the faith. But Friday morning when I thought about my homily, I, I didn't really know what to say, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go to the grade six class and try to get some words of wisdom from them. So I walked into the class and I said, okay, what is your advice for the grade seven class who is leaving? And we wrote down on the board 10 pieces of advice that they had. And I thought, okay, I need one. Give me your best advice. So we voted and there were some really good ones. One was like, you know, work really hard. Another one was, you know, get a job at McDonald's. And, and there were a lot of good pieces of, of advice. But the number one piece of advice from the grade six class was get a girlfriend. I tried to clarify to these 11-year-old kids, you mean have a crush? No, get a girlfriend. I'm not sure if they were calling out certain grade seven boys to man up and finally ask their crush out on a date at the grad mass, but what I do know is that they're well aware there's a huge difference between having a crush and getting a girlfriend. We all know there's a big difference between having a crush on someone and actually dating someone. A crush is just a one-way relationship. You could know everything about someone and constantly think about them all the time. They might not even know you exist. Dating though, there's a back and forth. It's a two-way relationship. In this month of June, we celebrate the sacred heart of Jesus. A reminder that the infinite love that God has for each one of us is expressed in a beating human heart. It's crazy. And I say this with total seriousness to each one of you, and I hope you listen. Ever since the first moment you were conceived in your mother's womb, Jesus has had a crush on you. Ever since the first moment you were conceived in your mother's womb, Jesus has had a crush on you on you. He's been madly in love with you, head over heels for you by name. He's thought about you constantly. He wants to spend time with you. He knows every little detail about your life, from the hairs on your head to the thoughts in your heart, from your greatest joys in life to even your deepest sorrows. Jesus knows it all, and he wants to be with you. He longs for you. He aches for you. He desires you by name. It's like Jesus is constantly living out Taylor Swift's 2009 hit song, You Belong With Me. Some of you know this song, You Belong With Me. It tells the story of this teenage girl and her crush, and she just longs to go beyond the level of crush. She just wishes this guy would realize that she is exactly what he needs. She is going to be the one who finally allows himself to be fully alive and be so happy in life. And so she sings this song. And you're most welcome to join me if you want to embarrass yourself in mass. Dreaming about the day when you will wake up and find, anyone? That what you're looking for has been here the whole time. Anyone? If you could see that I'm the one who understands you, been here all along, so why can't you see? You belong with me, you belong with me. This is but a pale comparison of God's love for us. Infinitely more than Taylor Swift, God's love for us is unspeakable. I can't really find the words to express the love that God has for you. I try my best, but it is infinitely beyond anything I can put together in words. Only Jesus is the one who completely knows you inside and out. And only he knows what will make you truly happy. And he speaks about it continually in as many possible words as he can through scripture. We heard about it in the responsorial song. 
that only Jesus shows us the path of life, abundant life, what we long for. Only in Jesus' presence is the fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. We heard those words today. Only in Jesus, all the deepest desires of our heart are fully realized, fully satisfied. And yet Jesus, in his crazy love for us, does not force it on anyone. He doesn't force it on anyone. He's a gentleman. I would be like James and John in today's gospel and say, all right, I've had enough of this. Let's get fire from heaven and consume these people who are just not responding. But Jesus rebukes me too. And Jesus is a gentleman. And so what he does is that ever so secretly, silently, into the depths of your heart, he says these words, dreaming about the day when you, will wake up and find that what you're looking for has been here the whole time. If you could see that I'm the one who understands you, been here all along, so why can't you see you belong with me? You belong with me. So he's aching for the day in which will we respond to go from the level of a crush in which it's all Jesus, all towards us, to the level of dating, which there's a back and forth, a two-way relationship. So if I ask you the question, where are you in your relationship with Jesus? To all of you, answer this question in your heart right now. With Jesus, is it on the level of a crush, a one-way relationship, or is it the level of dating, a two-way relationship? A helpful way to answer this question honestly comes from one of my favorite quotes about love. It's a great quote about love from this Jesuit, Father Joseph Whelan. And as I read this quote about love, see if this answers your relationship with Jesus. See if this describes what Jesus has done in your life. Nothing is more practical than finding God, than falling in love in a quite absolute final way What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart, what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. So if Jesus is the reason you got out of bed this morning because you'd rather pray than sleep in, and if spending time with Jesus, prayer, going to the Adoration Chapel, going to Mass, is what you'd rather do in your evenings and on weekends, that's a good sign you've moved from the level of a crush to the level of a relationship, dating. And if what you read is stuff about Jesus, like the Bible or Lives of the Saints, And if you find yourself in conversation always bringing up the subject of Jesus, and if you love to talk with people who also love Jesus, that's a good sign you've gone from the level of date, from the level of a crush, a one-way relationship, to the level of dating, a two-way relationship. Now, I'm not trying to guilt you. I'm just trying to provide the, the reality of life, is that if you've fallen in love with God, your life will look a lot different it'll look a lot different. Responding to the infinite love of God changes you. It is not just showing up at Mass one hour a week to check the box. That is totally backwards. Going to Mass should be the absolute culmination of an experience of loving God in which the two become one flesh right here. Where so often we have it backwards in life. So how do we fall in love? How do we fall in love? Well, one of the clearest, most consistent ways people fall in love with Jesus is by going on a retreat. Going on a retreat. At the end of Mass, Isabel, one of our core team members for youth ministry, will share her experience about going on a retreat this past summer in Whistler and falling in love with God. And she's going to talk to us more about an invitation we have for everyone in high school as well to say yes to going on this retreat and being open as well to falling in love with God. To conclude, if you're like me and if you tried 
to follow Christ and fall in love with him, you know it's not a one-time event. It's not just on one retreat. It's every single day, every single day. And that's why we're here at Mass, ultimately to experience the love of God. I want everyone to look at the crucifix right now. Everyone look at the crucifix. Mother Teresa would say, when you look at the crucifix, you see how much God loves you 2,000 years ago. Now everyone look at the tabernacle underneath the crucifix. She says, when you look at the Eucharist, you see how much God loves you today. Yes, in the Eucharist and at every single Mass, Jesus, by name, is saying to each one of you that he's dreaming about the day when you will wake up and find that what you're looking for, everything you're looking for in life, has been here the whole time. If you could see that I'm the one who understands you when no one else does. Been here all along. So why can't you see? Jesus says, you belong with me. You belong with me.